Hey all, a new season in LFM is ahead, their 10th season by now. So congrats to LFM for still being around, for still growing. And this also means going into the new season, there's going to be a new track that you need to acquire the license on. And this should be the guide that gets you there. Um, first, the lap time you currently need to achieve is a 132.691. So let's just say 132.7 um as average which isn't that fast if we look at the time i was able to achieve which is roughly five and a half seconds faster pretty much which means you have to get nowhere near my time really to get the license so we're also not really focusing on like doing everything how the pro does it because that's not really what is required of you to get started and i think some of you might even be learning the track from scratch of course this data pack i'll link it under the video so you can go there compare yourself to get a rough idea how far you off uh, how far you're off of where you think you are going and then i think we just get right into it so for those who are really really new and start the track from scratch they have never driven it right um of course you'll learn the direction of the corner so this one is a left that's a right and there's another right and all that um but adjusting the speed accordingly i find that is often coming you a new track something where you'll take a bit of time and what helps often is to remember some sort of pattern and what I mean is going for the first corner here. So every time the speed comes down, we're breaking for a corner, right? So there's a corner here, a corner here, a corner here, and so on. Um, and every time you're going through a corner, you can remember something like for the next. So let me just tell you. First corner is, well, any given speed, at the apex I'm doing 130. From here on I know the next corner has to be slightly slower and that's the only information I keep for now. I do turn one and then I know turn two is going to be slower. So I need to break a little more, a little earlier or whatever depending on of course the speed that I get there. But at the apex the corner needs to be slower which means maybe a gear lower or just the RPM sound a little lower. So just as a rough reference for yourself um to to get started right to to get the hang of it and to do less laps eventually to to get up to speed so first corner has any given speed second corner is slower third corner is a bit faster and then we have well pretty much a pattern until the end so the chicane slow the next chicane even slower the hairpin even slower and then for the last chicane a bit up again so if you wanted to let me bring up my pen here where is it it's loading there we go so if you wanted to like well we're not saying anything about turn one because the reference here is that's going to be the reference actually and then that's any given speed and the next corner is slower faster slower 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 faster again just keep that pattern in mind when you're really starting out with a track and maybe that's already a good reference to get started but now we'll go into the actual lap i have chosen the audi here uh, because nobody really did that on the platform but i think it's a great drive uh, one of the very tolerant cars quite soft can take a lot of curbs um, and mid-engine which means it's, it's quite responsive wants to do the corners so and then of course we need to find the well i slow down a bit to find all the brake markers and have the sound off so you see where i'm braking here now is well pretty much looking from the outside quite a lot before the, that bridge here but if you're in the cockpit this is just about when the bridge is like full in your view just about to leave the windshield uh, towards the roof and I think it does make sense to still behave in reference to, to this big board because everything else really looks roughly the same and it's hard to build a reference towards that so just look at that big board here and put your brake marker in reference to that if you want you can go for this like second to last zero sign on the right could also be an option right here the banners change on the sidewall and then there's one coke zero and here's another coke zero so maybe you can eye that as well as a good reference for braking and the other part that is really important here because zolder in general is a very narrow track 
and just using every inch of it every centimeter millimeter is going to matter a lot for lap time because percentage wise if you have a one meter wide track if you leave 10 centimeters on the table well that's 10 percent of the track ignored um, and if you have a wide, very wide track 100 meters wide and you use you don't use 10 centimeters well then you're only throwing 0.1 uh, percent away of, of track width just like kind of give you an idea right the narrower the track the more important it is to max out on the track limits so the braking then whatever you want to use the board here on top or the second to last coke zero sign up to you and then just checking quickly from the outside how close we really are to the wall and you can see there isn't too much left i'm even getting closer while i'm going through the braking zone so this is going to be really important and it's no problem really for you if you're just starting out you're not going to make the license in the first attempt anyway so you might as well start practicing go closer to the wall even closer until you touch it and only then you really start getting a feeling for how wide your car is so don't be afraid to do the obvious mistake but then you really can build a feeling how it actually looks where the wall is going and um, you might not actively look there but what your brain essentially does is where does the wall start and where does it hit the car right so you're probably looking at something at this area here this gives you an indication of how close you can be to the wall this extended line here tells you roughly how close you are to the wall and this is the reference you're building over time quite intuitively um then initially of course we're hard on the brake so try to reach the maximum percentage there but then as soon as we start turning in of course the trail braking needs to start because we have to decide for what we want to use the grip do you want to use it to slow down the car or do you want it to use for turning or any combination in between and that is essentially what trail braking does and we'll certainly see this quite good here looking at the data so swapping to turn one and what we're looking for is the initial hard braking here but then already just roughly marking those sections here here just where the braking the trail braking starts here where the braking ultimately ends and here where it starts and if you just look at those distances here then you could probably say well that is the the most awful painting i ever did um the first bit here is like one third and the other the second part is like two thirds maybe so two thirds of the braking zone are somewhat trail braking modulating the brake while you increase the steering and while it never looks ideal um you'll roughly see the pattern of the brake decreasing while the steering increases okay this is a very rough average but ultimately in general terms we're speaking in general terms this is the pattern right as you decrease the brake you increase the steering or if you want to approach it from the other side you increase the steering as you decrease the brake just because there's only so much grip to have and you have to choose do i use it for the one thing or the other so always very important here the other things that we're checking when we're going into the corners are where is the slowest point in the corner and where is the tightest point in the corner so if we zoom in a bit and we go here into the graph and you can see where the car is the slowest you should be able to see that now the black marking is slightly before the middle of the corner so here let's mark that uh, with a circle where the car is the slowest but you can clearly see the apex is ever so slightly later so these oh, sorry these two points are crucial for you for every corner right because th this helps you also remember what you need to do in any particular corner so you're slowing down and already before you hit the actual apex before you are the most inside you can start accelerating again the only important thing here is you need to be aggressive else the car does not rotate anymore this might change with a new patch right and the new season goes right into the new patch so we'll potentially have to redo this guide if if the changes turn out really drastic i'll certainly update the package with a new lap and we'll probably see lfm also reset the benchmark time so for now for the first uh, three weeks of the new season we'll stick to this video and then we might have to do a new one 
So the apex is slightly later than the slowest point in the corners, which means you are accelerating through the apex, which you can see if we just look at the line here, my throttle is already fully pressed as the car goes through the apex. That's important just for you to remember how to approach that corner. And if you find yourself to instead, you hit the apex, but you keep slowing down because you were still going too fast and your car was pointing away from the corner or something, then your slowest point in the corner will suddenly be here after the apex and this is going to cost you a lot of time on the straight afterwards so just remember that keep the slowest point in the corner and the tightest point in the corner close together at least as a start right you don't have to do the exact same thing that i do but keep them close together and that will definitely help get lap time out of the car then let's let's stick to more like general patterns roughly um turning wise across the entire track you can see i am never not a single time steering more than 90 or 100 degrees right so if if you'll ever find yourself in a situation where you steer more than 100 120 or even your arms touch in the middle again because you're turning 180 degree you're probably doing too much so just take that advice and watch yourself a bit. If you steer more than 100 degrees, you're probably overdoing it a bit. Okay, then let's actually watch turn one quickly, how it looks from the onboard. I'll slow it down right away. We'll do the fast lap at the end. So the turn, it starts a bit. Immediately, the brake starts releasing. The rear is a bit loose here. That's why you see the steering going in and out. I'm trying to balance the rear. And as soon as I'm off the brake, the car starts settling again or almost off the brake and I don't need to do the corrections anymore. I clip the curb or just when the curb disappears under the car, slam the throttle again and you'll see the car understeers a bit. So it was probably a tiny bit too quick. Um, so I had to do the slight lift that you just saw there to make the exit off the corner. And this is the next part that happened um, is re really important because on a narrow track, we need to use every tiny bit that the game is giving us and i think i pretty much nailed this here so the tires are just about still on the green stuff here that offers support and well the camber is already almost arching over the sand there um so you using all that is important what is also important about that is don't just go there by opening the steering right the the car needs to be forced there be uh, um, um, given the speed it is carrying, right? If you get to this point by doing 140, you could have probably also taken a tighter line. So the target is to just about stay on track because the car it has no other option. That's the only way to get there or to stay on the track in, in this situation. That is the, the perception that you're looking for. The car just about remains on the track because the speed is just about high enough or slow enough to do that. Whenever you feel like, oh, I'm I'm not that fast, but I but Neil said I need to go to the outside and you're just opening the steering um, to go there, but you could have essentially taken a tighter line, that just tells you, well, you maybe need to increase the speed there a bit. Then very short distance actually between uh, turn one and turn two so we'll need to oh that is really loud we need to transition very quickly over to the left side and i think we, we just see that better in the telemetry that once turn one is done and i'm on the very outside here there is never really a break i always keep transitioning over to the other side um, to get ready for the breaking of the next corner right whenever you start being lazy in this zone here Whenever you start being lazy in this zone and not reposition, you'll eventually have to break in the middle of the track. Again, giving away crucial track width that allows you to carry more speed into the corner. So don't be lazy between those two corners. Reposition early so you can straighten up the car here. That's the next crucial point. Straighten up the car before the next braking zone. Because it's always easier to break in a straight line when you're already cornering and you're hitting the brake it likely means that one tire is not going to be fully loaded it's not going to support you as much especially when you brake aggressively and then the abs just interferes or it can't even handle it the tire locks up and you go straight and of course we want to avoid that so for braking it's important to be as straight as possible um, sometimes you won't manage that just 
because the, the track doesn't allow it or it's not actually the fastest line. But as a general rule of thumb, we want to start braking in a straight line or in an as straight as possible line, which is then also indicated by there being very, very little steering angle applied as I hit the brakes here. So we're talking five to 10 degrees somewhere here. Just trying to tell you we are braking in a straight fashion. Now looking at turn two, it kind of means we also need to look at turn three. They are pretty much almost, well, they are adding up to 180 degrees, but you can see the first corner covers a few more degrees, right? The, the angle in the inside here is a bit narrower, which means this car probably has to turn, I don't know, 100 degrees here and maybe just 80 degrees here, something like that. And that just means the second or the third corner here is probably a lot quicker than the second one. Um, and you can also see by, again, we just do the same thing here. Where's the slowest point in the corner? Where's the tightest point in the corner? If we just go, where do we go? Slightly here. That is the slowest point in the corner again. So let's put a slight marker. The slowest point in the corner, again, is definitely way before we are the tightest in the corner, which is here. Okay. And we are again accelerating through this apex point there okay which means in turn if you look backwards again you need to be done with the slowing down before you're on the very inside of that corner and that's pretty much a pattern that you'll see often always differentiate between the slowest point in the corner and the tightest point in the corner and try at least to put them similarly to what i do most of the time you'll have the slowest point before the apex in very rare cases they will fall into the same place. We might already see that one corner later. Um, however, again, you see the initial braking here, just ever so tiny amounts of time, I'll actually be maximum braking. And that is because we already start turning quite quickly here. There never really is this ideal straight line braking. So as soon as we turn the wheel, we'll have to allow the tires to find that grip somewhere. So we cannot use all the grip as well for the braking. So pretty much in this braking zone, you could say that the entire braking zone is trail braking. So don't be too aggressive here on the brake. Maybe initially, only really when the car is straight, you can slam it initially. But once you turn the steering wheel, really imagine a connection to your left foot that handles the brake. As soon as you turn the wheel, release the brake and try to do this. Well, it's not always a smooth pattern, um, but roughly follow this idea of decreasing the brake as you increase the steering okay and it's of course it, it's a bit offset here it's not perfectly in line of but the average of this line that would be um the target looking at it from the cockpit view again get comfortable where the car ends right very close to the white line here and on turn in the rear steps out maybe a bit so just respect that as well so you're not clipping the grass and not cl clipping the grass is actually easier when you have aligned the car with the outside white line earlier let me just quickly explain when the car is traveling parallel to the white line then so white line here i mean you can already see it and the middle of the car kind of points into the same direction now if i hit the brakes aggressively i know the car won't suddenly go into this direction can't happen because we're traveling straight but say if your car was in a position where it was still repositioning i'm painting this rather extreme right the car is going this direction and you now hit the brake and still have to do this rotation then it's very likely that you just don't have enough cognitive resources literally to manage to keep the car away from the grass and figure out where the apex in the corner is. There's only so many points you can look at at once and usually that's one point. So by putting the car in a position, and that's the whole repositioning aggressively, right? So coming over to the side, straighten up the car. Now you know you will not be in a position where the grass is threatening you. And that makes it easier to use more tracks. So transition to the other side early, straighten up the car, put it parallel with the white line, and then the grass can't hurt you. Let's move on and see. The initial braking has already happened, so right away I'm starting the trail braking. 
And then I'm still kind of trying to stay for the outside here because this initial king is really nasty. You can turn in too early and then you find yourself in the middle of the track. But the actual turn in point, well, it's more something like here. Right, that's the actual turn and point into the corner. And that makes it also really tricky here in, in the section to drive um, properly. I think it looks more extreme actually in the game than it looks here in, in our measured map. But you can see there's the kink and we're cutting through this kink in a bit. So if I had to idealize this line a bit, then we're starting the braking from here and going straight again to the outside position from where we actually start turning in. Right, I'm overdoing this. I'm making this more exaggerated, right? But here is an area that you're kind of cutting across. And then the car comes ever so slightly further to the outside again to the actual turn in position. So be aware of that kink in this area here that it's not confusing you too much. Take a bit of a shortcut through that. Um, and what happens here again is probably you're leaving a safety space to the white line, to the grass there. Additionally, you'll also see this when in the car. The idea line is, well, more in the middle of the track and it d does really matter for the grip level. So if you turn in from the very outside here, there's just not going to be as much grip as on the more darker rubber line. Now the car slows down a bit until the, well, not middle of the turn. Here the brakes are stopping. Now I'm coasting a bit and here I'm back on the throttle. And you can see I'm nowhere near the apex yet. It's probably 10, 50 meters away, but I've slowed down enough that now on throttle, the car will still come further to the inside. So with the throttle press going onto the curb, that was just, well, I'll show you again what happened there. You can see it on the exit here, this small thing it's just as I go over the curb on the inside, I'm just letting go of the throttle ever so slightly because the curb can force the car to snap. And if you just allow a tiny bit of lift on the throttle, it can stay, make the car much more stable or at least much less likely to snap on the exit there. Then you're really driving those two corners as one, right? I'm never going straight in between. I always have steering angle applied down here. And, but the, the second part of that corner should really be flat. All you're aiming for is carry all the speed to go wider on the exit here. And don't really be be scared of those extra curbs they put there. Uh, the car is most likely fine handling them. And also check how late on the curb I'm actually in the widest position. So if we look at this from above, you can see I'm definitely in the in the last third of that exit curb is where I'm in the widest position here. Then very easy to go through this right handle that shouldn't really be an issue. And now we're again seeking the breaking point. Actually. Take me back five seconds here. Where's the breaking point for this? It is exactly, um, well, that is the marker. You can see, let me try from above. That is probably the better perspective. Yeah, I think you can see it visually at least. Yes, so there's the, the you can see the idea line here, right? This is the, the idea line. And then you can see here, there's an edge where the idea line widens a bit. And really this point here, I'll remove everything again. This is the point that you're also seeing from the cockpit. So if we go here, you can see here is something is happening to the surface of the track where the idea line is a bit wider. And this is what I'm trying to see when I approach the corner. You can tell this is not the breaking point, but I'm behaving myself in reference to this point. Okay, sorry, I forgot that. So breaking point for the next one then, let's start there. You see the, the idea line again starting to become a bit wider here, just a bit more contrasty, sharper, right? There's a bit of idea line darkening happening somewhere here. And what I'm looking for with my eyes is, is this section here where it becomes really sharp and clear to see. And you can tell in the cockpit really where that is. And again, <coughs> sorry. And again, it's not the breaking point, but it's the point I behave towards. And this is the point I'm looking for. And then I built my breaking point from there. For this corner, turn four, we have a very short dash on the brake, pretty much. This spans like, well, not even 100 meters. It's probably more like, well, it's more like 50 meters, I think, 40 meters of braking. So harsh dash on the brake, right off again. 
and again from a kind of straight position i turned in a little already was probably not necessary the rear started turning already had to counter steer as i came off the brake and then slowly committed for the corner here the key here for this corner is i think we need to find again the slowest point in the corner and the apex you can already see this is probably not the middle of the turn the slowest point here again slightly earlier let's mark that one more time here here's the slowest point while the apex is a bit here again this pattern kind of repeats and this additionally i would say the middle of the turn so where half of the turn is done is here which means the apex is slightly after the middle of the corner i think this helps a lot for perception when you actually want to be on the inside in that corner the other important bit is don't do harsh braking or trailing into the corner it's very high speed the downforce plays a big role the car will be instable if you break into the corner rather coast a bit and you'll most likely find yourself in a situation where you rather need to throttle to stabilize the car a bit so don't shy away from small corrections it's fine just don't don't do them too much and here you can see I did a tiny correction because I felt I was getting to the inside too quickly. So I was delaying the apex a tiny bit longer by this short tab on the brake here. Uh, staying in fourth gear for that one, no further downshifts needed. The car has the torque. If you can keep the speed up, it could be that you're if you're going quite a bit slower that you want to go down to third gear here but try to manage the downshift before the corner or during the braking or something try not to downshift in the middle of the turn because this will suddenly upset the car screw your balance and make it very tricky to leave the corner in a, a nice fashion the other thing is it's quite hard to see but then again maybe not the track is quite a bit narrower on the exit of the turn than it is on the entry here um so you're kind of turning into the inside and then on the exit you don't have or it feels like you don't have the same amount of space you, uh, which means we're putting the apex ever so slightly after the middle of the corner so just another reason why we're doing this is because the exit is a bit tighter than the entry is and therefore you yeah can't just drive it like a normal 90 degree corner where the apex would be more in the middle um, since we're already doing high speed, there's very little traction issues with the car, so you can most likely slam the throttle. Um, and you'll see that I'm also kind of trying to hit the curb on the inside because that helps turning the car around. I'll play it. Half speed. Just roll a bit, tiny correction there. And then once on the curb, fully on the power. There's a bit of trust needed here for that very narrow exit curb. But then you'll find your way. So later you put the apex, the easier the exit of the corner becomes. For the chicane then, again trying to find the breaking point. There's the 100 meter board, we're flying past that. Um, and I'm looking for, and we'll, you'll see this shortly, I think it's here right now. Next to, well, the lamppost. But there's something in the grass where it becomes a bit more uh, dusty, more sandy. So if we're going forward here in slow motion, you'll be able to tell there is a patch somewhere where it's a bit brighter. And that's really the thing that I'm aiming for here in the braking. Slightly into the like more darker ideal line and then aiming for the, this kind of sand patch there on the right. Then I'm hitting the brake hard, already aligned on the outside here. Let's go for five, six. Braking fully in a straight line. The longer you brake in a straight line, the more capacity the car has to slow down. And again, here in this chicane, this is probably the part that's going to annoy you the most. So let's get this right. You do not have to use a lot of curb. You can see this looks like a lot here in the graphics, but if we look inside the car, let's slow down a bit. Again, as I start steering, Slightly after, I'll open up the brake. And then, before the car hits the curbs, very important, we need to be back on the throttle because what this does is it will lift the nose up of the car and allow it to actually swallow the car, right? Back onto the throttle, the front will lift up a bit, the rear comes down a bit, the car becomes A, more stable, and two, it is allowed to fit the curb underneath. 
and at the same time you'll be able to see that as we're while we're still on the curb here in the initial phase i'm just on the throttle but not completely so it's like halfway through the throttle stabilizes the car allows the nose to come up a bit but if we force it full throttle we're probably not making the right hander of the turn and it might be an issue just while you're on the curb with full throttle applied the rear end of the car might be a bit snappy so we're trying to avoid that the important bit here is to be off the brake halfway into the throttle or something to pick the nose back up to allow the car to fit the curb under the front splitter and then maybe you can see this here even though it's a left right corner you can see all the way in this image here the car is really going to the left right it's always going to the left and this is something i think what might help you to really take this corner the right way there's virtually no way you're not going to make the right corner here on the exit. It's very, very, very rare you go um, into the grass here. Like, it's virtually impossible to do that, which, of course, I'm, I'm saying this with my 4,000 hours on the game, and it might look different for you, but in general, it will help you a lot to only think of the chicane as a left corner, and only once you're over the curb, you can start thinking about maybe turning to the right again. The other important bit is this curb, the second one, is going to be really, really bumpy. So the more neutral your steering can be over this bump, the more likely it is your car will be in a decent position, in a stable position once you land after that curb. And you can see where the car is pointing now, but there's plenty of time to still make the turn and not run into the grass there on the exit. So it really helps you think of the chicane as a left corner mainly. Try to slow down again before you hit the first apex even be on throttle again for the first curb on the left to allow the curb to fit under the car and then have very neutral steering for the second part of the chicane here because the more neutral the steering is the le more likely the car is to be stable after um, it is landing back from the curb then we're going further You don't have to take a very aggressive swing here. It's probably fine to be, well, it's two third on, on the right side of the track or so. So no need to come from that white line. You'll even make it if you're further to the inside, no problem. But the important bit is to come to the inside rather late because what we want to achieve is, again, that we are straight by the time of braking. And that might look a bit better if we do it from here. Yes, maybe. Again. Similar to turn two, just having to find a clever way to start braking in a, in a straight line. And if you take a very tight entry into this left-hander, then your line might look uh, something more like this. And now you have issues getting across again to the left side in order to brake on the very outside. So you start being at an angle here, and now you need to focus on the left side of the track so you're not cutting into the grass, blah, blah, blah. So just make sure by the time of braking, your car is straight, and that's very easily achieved by taking a slightly wider swing here. Doesn't have to be all the way though. And a late apex in this corner here in between, right? The middle of the turn is somewhere here. The apex is here. So that's why we want to be on the inside and stay on the inside before coming to the braking for the next chicane. That's what you should see here. Already pointing straight, and I'm even considering the, all the shape the track has here. So I'm just about going straight, and my outside tire is going to just about clip that curb here on turning. That's what I'm targeting in the cockpit here, where I'm, where I'm facing the car. So then hard on the brake, as you do, and only really in the very late turn-in phases here, the, the trail braking will start. It's very, very late. It's really happening in the last third or last quarter of the braking zone here, where the trailing really starts. So it's a very short period. And the, the steering increase is also very tricky. And now this corner is really, really... Um, well, it, it's weird for many ways. A, the track limits are not where they seem to be. This is valid. You can pretty much put the inside wheel very close to the cone there. And then the same is true for the left-hander. This is valid for whatever reason as well. I think the only point where you really need to stay, check is, is this line here. That's where the outside tire is not allowed to cut across. 
So you need to kind of, I don't know, find this rain gutter or something, or at least keep the outside tires on the white and red stripes and not go onto the green patch. But with the left side or the majority of the car, really, you need to go over all these bumps. Um, and using that track, that's easily half a second to a second when you're not driving around the white line there. So cutting the track is, is crucial as much as the game allows you there. Um, but let's wind this back a little because there is more to unravel. And we're going to do this by stepping out of the car once more. And we're also changing the camera. If we zoom in, I think you can start to see how the track is actually shaped in terms of where it goes down and where it goes up. And if we just fly around here, you can now see the first curb. Like it's almost a hole. We're really falling into this space there and that's going to cause issues with the car right we're we're going over the the sausages there and then almost falling into the ground by i don't know 20 30 centimeters something like that there really is a 3d shape that is trying to destroy the car there and we need to find a way to sort that and to a lesser extent this is also happening here in this left hander but it's much less problematic already than in the first one so what do we do in order to not run into the ground there so we're slowing it down here a bit we're braking pretty much just look where the throttle already is back applied um let me fly out of the car actually maybe reset the camera a bit because then we don't have to zoom that much but i just want to give you that rough feeling of where you need to be timing wise with the throttle so just when i start going onto the curb just when the curb goes into the ditch here or hole or whatever you want to call it that's why we want to be back on throttle because again this will help pick the nose up this will help to stabilize the car this will help to not run into the ground and have some unexpected behavior um, going through this hole there uh, we can probably also see it if we just fly outside the car here a bit. Yeah, the, the outside of the car is still where the hole isn't that large, but the inside, it does really matter. And I mean, yeah, we're the inside is flying here, right? And the slower you go, the more likely it actually is that the car runs into the ground there. The, the faster you go, the less likely the hole is going to be a problem because you're jumping over it. So... I'd say just keep that in mind in a way, but then yeah, I kind of hit that thing there regardless. It's just important to be on the throttle there to give the rear tires a bit of lock so the car doesn't suddenly rotate very aggressively. The throttle actually helps there stabilizing the car, taking capacity of rotation out of the car, and this will make this corner more pleasing to drive. Then just watch the throttle pedal as we go along. On turn in into the left hander, I'm going off the throttle now to get the car into the left hander. So what we're doing is we're opening the differential on the rear, which just allows the rear tires to spin independently to some degree, which means the outside tire is now allowed to travel faster than the inside, which allows the car to rotate. Additionally, we're putting some more weight on the front axle. We're taking some weight away from the rear axle and that allows the car to rotate into this corner. Perception wise, let's check something here. So this first corner, we're doing it at 90, 95. The second corner, we're doing it 87. So again, what you wanna remember is that here, the first one is say the faster of the two, and this is the slower corner of the two. Just as a way to find a pattern through this corner and the corner afterwards already a big plus again going to be quite a bit faster than both corners before so it's kind of medium fast slow faster than the initial one um and then you see so doing the braking doing the throttle over the first curb keep the speed up keep the car stable keep the nose out of the ground then once we change direction in the steering you're really looking at this point here where i'm st steering from one direction to the other right we're coming across to zero point here this is where i go into the other direction and in sync with that i'm going off the throttle 
this is really important because then we're getting an aggressive weight shift onto the front right tire and that allows it to grip up better and we're rotating faster through the left hander but you're just as a beginner you're really just looking at sequence of events when is he on throttle when is he going into the steering um, and trying to get the sequence of events right here then over this left hander aggressive throttle keeping this car stable maybe even so aggressive that the rear comes around and we're opening up the left hand uh, the right hander afterwards so once the bumpiness stops there onto the power reposition a bit you can see i think here this is actually important right here the car starts stepping out a bit and then in a very short phase i'm repositioning the car to the left once more before i aggressively turn into the right and what this does is again i'm creating a weight transfer from one side to the other in an attempt to throw the car somewhat into the corner which increases its amount of rotation and might allow you to carry a bit more speed but probably something that for the license guide not that important to do but if you want to already start playing with the cause weight a bit this is the way you can approach it here then for this one we're turning in and only once we figured out the turning angle here so something like 90 degrees then after the turn in here the turn in is happening and then just right after i'm lifting the throttle a tiny bit what i want to do here is i want to stop accelerating or and keep the speed i definitely do not want to lose speed right so i'm staying in the throttle to kind of keep the speed stable or just mildly accelerate over the right side curb uh, because speed wise this is very much possible to keep keep going faster faster here um, the other bit is the curb is very destabilizing for the car if you're a little into the throttle say halfway it doesn't have to be 60 or the 65 percent i'm doing here i'm probably doing this differently every lap as well uh, but you want to be in the throttle to stabilize the car as you go over the sausages on the right side here i forgot again the braking point right so let's go five seconds back and just go to that really quickly you can see the ideal line ending there a bit and then it restarts and then it's really just as soon as the front tires go into the dark patch on the tarmac that's when you want to hit the brakes for this one again let's watch the exit here the turn in is coming then halfway off the throttle keep the car accelerating slowly over the curb again we can use the sausages there on the inside just take care to not go into the grass that's the important part the grass is going to be too deep going to upset the car but if you go over the sausages and kind of right back onto whatever this is you will be fine the target here is to be flat through the next corner and i guess on on the audi i think it's easy there might be more front engine cars that have it a little more tricky they need an aggressive turn in into this right hander here from the widest possible position so we're going onto the curb here really as much as you well as much track as you can find on the left side here and then on many cars you'll need an aggressive turn into the right mostly front engine cars and then just this aggressive turn in into this corner this is going to help a lot to get it around the corner just a quick look here where the apex is placed i'd say the middle of the turn is somewhere here and the apex is ever so slightly later placed which allows you to keep stay flat out and stay on the track at the exit of this corner there as well but it can certainly be done flat out and especially the worse your chicane before is the less exit speed you have there the more likely you can actually be flat out through this one so it might be easier for you than it is for me because i'm exiting the chicane a little faster here again make sure you align early with the left side of the track the braking marker again pretty much just when we go into the darker patches of the track or the 100 meter board plenty of markers you can use here and then act towards that there's many ways through this corner um, that can all kind of result in the same line let's see what approach i've really done here for the hairpin it looks very normal right where we have the apex right in the middle but it's definitely possible also in this corner to keep going straight for a bit longer and then come to the inside for a later apex this might be painted a bit too extreme but this will also work and you could even do a line where you break a little later then extend the braking zone by kind of going diagonal quite early for the corner 
and almost do some sort of double apex here so you'd have one apex here early and one apex here later same as the single late apex but there are different ways through the corner the important part is i think to manage to pick up speed for the straight afterwards because that's where the majority of time is really uh, lying around let's watch how it looks once more from the cockpit view heartbreaking as we start going into the darker tarmac turn in a little still fully applied to the brake and only really once we commit completely to the corner that's when the trail braking will start here not really a long phase and then as soon as the car on the inside hits the curb we're right back onto the power there's virtually zero coasting happening between well not zero but very very little right we're giving the car some time to settle but right back onto the power maybe not fully aggressively then the traction control might have it a bit rough to manage the power so i'm kind of doing a two-step thing going onto the power and then increasing the last 30 40 percent a bit slower but still fast enough to call it slamming the throttle to be fair the important bit is i think to build speed on the exit is to your be in a position where you feel like you can open the steering very quickly and the more straight your steering is the easier it is for the car to build speed the less traction control interference you will have and now we're already coming for the last corner on the track i think i actually have to recalibrate our track map here because i'm not cutting that much there in the corner however let's find the braking point first this one is a bit more tricky i have to say let's go forward 100 meter board we're flying past that and i feel again we are having yeah that's the one um we're again looking for a change in color on the grass on the right side here you can see again it's getting a bit more sandy there on the right or maybe you look at the lamp post or the flag on the right or definitely before the bridge there that's kind of where the breaking point is And then really the same thing as in the corner before. We have very harsh, very long braking. The trail braking really is only a fifth, a quarter of the entire braking zone. There's really no coasting again happening in between. I think we again have a pattern here where the slowest point in, the, in this corner is pretty much before the apex. But doesn't really change as well even with a lot of throttle applied the traction control takes everything away um but again doing this thing slowest point in the corner apex in the corner and then we have the same thing where we're accelerating through the the second turn so you could say this is the slowest point in the corner and then we're accelerating through that apex there as well general perception should be even though it doesn't really look like this here is that you're opening up um the right hander so i'm ex painting this in an exaggerated way you're trying to do something like staying tighter here opening up the right hander to get good exit speed onto the main straight but you can tell the perception might be quite a bit different than the line you're actually taking there but just keep that in mind that you want to have a good exit onto the straight that's more important than having good entry speed into this chicane Then there's a bit of, yeah, the, the curb is kind of a bit nasty. It's trying to deceive you. We're really seeing this when we zoom out and look at it from above. Um, and I don't know why they're doing this kind of curb shapes. I've really, I have no clue. They start making the curb wider here, wider, wider. Then they make it super wide and then they make it very narrow again. So essentially what you can drive along is this line here. Right, that, that's that's what you're targeting. You have to perceive a line that goes right through the sausage curbs there. Can't really use more because else you'll run into and really the sand really is a hole here. You'll fall really down, the car bottoms out, it might spin, whatever, so don't do that. Um, but you can definitely go across the sausages again with a bit of throttle applied that will stabilize the car there massively. Well, maybe let's fly over the car, that should be better to see. Right, and you can tell I'm I'm really I'm not even going here, I'm not going here. I'm I'm going this way. So I'm aiming at this is the edge I'm aiming for this corner, just right next to that. That's where I'm trying to be. 
and then let's watch the right hand right afterwards short full throttle there for the right once i turn in again once i go onto the curb i release the throttle a little bit but not entirely and then same thing here with the curb it starts becoming wider then it becomes really wide and then it's tight again so i'm again driving a line that aims sorry that wasn't good that aims for this patch here right this is roughly the perceived actual curb that I'm driving. So I'm just trying to stay away from the green hole that we're gonna have here, have here again, but we're definitely not driving along this here because that's gonna put us in a very bad direction for the corner exit. Then going over the sausages, halfway, three quarters of throttle, something to keep the differential lock, keep the car stable over the curbs until the car settles. And then we're increasing into the rest of the power keep the car bumping here or bouncing here once the bouncing stops you can commit to the throttle again really important minimal steering angle on the exit that's going to keep the traction control silent and allow the car to build speed and then you'll just need to do a couple of these laps one after another um, and so you get the full impression once we're just going to run the entire lap now at full speed with me shutting up and then you'll just click the link Take a look at the data pack you'll have to set up for race for the qualifying. I think for the license test, you just put 20, 30 liters or something like that. That's not going to change the balance of the car a lot. And then relax a bit. You don't have to be as extreme as I did. Try to go by this rough pattern. This corner is fast. This is slower. This is even slower. That one is faster again. And then we have whatever I showed at the very beginning at the video. Take it easy. Don't be too aggressive. Don't scream at the car. Don't be too harsh with your inputs. Let the car do the work. Try to use the track width mainly. Be on the outside when you need to. Be on the inside where you need to. Try to find the same or similar slowest points in the corners that I do. And when the car goes wide, make sure the car goes wide because it's fast, not because you open the steering, if that makes sense. Um, and then I hope you have your license very soon and we'll Maybe see you on track one or the other day. Have a good one. Bye.